Well, the reef balls are an alternative substrate, and our shells are becoming increasingly scarce as our oyster fishery has declined. So we found that oyster larvae will settle on other substrates, concrete, granite, bulkheads. So we're using this as another tool in the toolbox to conduct our restoration projects. Basically, we set up a three-piece fiberglass mold, put it all together. Uh, you have an inflatable bladder that goes inside of it so it hollows it out. You have some other um, inflatables that you put in the mold as well, which creates some holes that allow for circulation. The cement is poured and the next day you crack the mold open and you've got a reef ball that weighs about 100 pounds and they're going to go in the Lafayette River and the Piankatank River and they will provide a hard substrate for baby oysters to attach to and basically you will have 100% um, coverage within a year of oysters on the structure. There's only three of us here in Virginia at CBF that do this kind of work and there's no way in the world we could produce 9 to 10 million spat on shell a year or produce 200 reef balls and get larvae set on those without uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers and thousands and thousands of volunteer hours. We have all kinds of volunteers. We have teachers, we have students, we have bankers, lawyers, doctors, just anybody who's interested in the environment, interested in nature. Well, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been real fun. This is my first year actually volunteering with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and um, I hope to uh, volunteer some more in the future. Um, overall, this experience with CBF has been awesome, and it's it's hard work. Definitely, we've we've gotten sweaty and dirty, and um, but it's definitely rewarding knowing that we're doing something good for the bay. Oysters are one of the most important natural filters or cleaners of the Chesapeake Bay, and we're not going to restore the Chesapeake Bay without that filtering capability. 